Good morning, Jason. Here's your machine, the Breville Brewster Express BES870 in black stainless steel. As you saw in the photos last, last night, uh, this machine is in fairly good condition, but does have some scratches, mainly around the front side and the top on the bean hopper lid. It uh, wasn't boxed properly, I think the, the, the person who put it back in the box put the cable next to the bean next to the bean hopper lid and um, yeah it wasn't it was rubbing around the side here so it got a scratch there uh, but nothing too bad no massive dents just wear and tear um, on the inside yeah it's great no problems at all I finished the service yesterday last night uh, all I had to do was add a new rubber head seal which is standard maintenance I would say um, what else did I do? Yeah, I did a grinder calibration. Um, so now we'll make a coffee on it with hopefully settings that will make this an easy purchase for you. You get the machine, use it as is. You won't have to mess too much with the settings. I'll be making a magic, which is like a latte, a short latte. When you first turn on the machine, it'll take usually about a minute for the boiler to reach temperature. Uh, you'll see the buttons light up, these three. And when they do, it means the boiler is up to temperature, but like, you, you still have to warm up some components like your port filter and your cup. So I would recommend you run a blank shot. So I've got the port filter empty. Uh, that's the dual wall basket, the double shot basket. Um, it's pressurized, so meaning it'll give us pressure even when it's empty. We'll press the double. That's going to warm things up nicely. You can do that once or twice, it's up to you. Then take out the water filter, dry it thoroughly with a tissue, and then now we're ready to grind. Um, I'll be using grind size four. This is a double basket. Sorry, this is a dual wall pressurized basket, so the grind size doesn't have doesn't have to be as fine. Uh, there's another variety of baskets called the single wall unpressurized baskets. Those ones are a bit harder to use. Uh, but the advantage is that they will give you like a um, uh, easier cleaning, and the crema is also um, what's the word? A bit like more flatter. This one will give you a thick foam, um, and you may notice the difference in the taste. But this is very easy to use. We'll be using grind size number four and adding seventeen grams of coffee. That's what it takes. I'm using my scale here. Look, you don't have to measure uh, the coffee every single time. You just have to get it approximately right in the ballpark. Uh, that's the beauty of this basket. You don't have to get the right grind size. You don't have to get the right um, weight. You don't even have to use perfect beans. Whereas with the single wall baskets, uh, they're a bit harder to use because you have to get the right grind size, amount, and you have to be using perfectly fresh beans. Add some beans. That's my first dose. I like to do the single 
So um, the ground look, the ground size will control how, how fast the coffee will flow when we brew. The grinder mount will control how long to, the grinder grinds for, and uh, the flat size will give us single or double quantity. I personally like to keep it on single and do it twice. I feel like it's less messy that way. So about eight grams. Eight point two, that's fine. Uh, if I get eight to eight and a half, uh, that's okay. I will lightly press it with a tamper to make way for the second dose. And there's my second dose. So that gave me another 8 of 7.5. Um, so that means we'll put it on the 1 o'clock position, hopefully that'll give us closer to 8, 8.5. Once I got about 16, 17 grams. Yep, 16 and a half, that's good. Uh, I'll spread it with my finger and then press it with a tamper. If you have a scale, aim for 16 to 17 grams for this sort of basket. Um, if you don't, just add enough coffee so that when you tamp, the silver part on the tamper disappears. Just like that. This is with firm pressure. If you have too much coffee, the, the silver part won't disappear and it'll be all the way up to here. And that's too much coffee um, and if it sinks all the way down then that's too little coffee but it should be just about the silver depth or the, the depth of the silver part I should say um, I would do that if I was in a hurry or if I didn't have a scale then you, you want to clean the edges if there's any coffee there you want to wipe it off lock in the pot filter just in the middle there like I said the grip head is seal is um, fresh and thick so you don't have to force it all the way to add some pressure, just in the middle is fine. In a few years time, maybe it'll start loosening and you'll have to force it a bit more to the right to prevent it slipping backwards. Um, if you like to add sugar or sweetener or some flavors, I would recommend you add them now before the espresso, so that when the espresso is brewed, it mixes nicely. And the last variable that we'll be changing is the grind, sorry, the brew amount. The machine is programmed to give you about, uh, what's, what's that, 40 to 60 mils of coffee, which is, I think, it, too much, in my opinion. The, this being a 17 gram dose, meaning it means that we should get a 35 gram espresso shot. That's a two to one ratio, that's standard for espresso. Uh, we should be getting a two to one ratio in 30 seconds. Well, let's say 20 to 30 seconds, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, if my grind size is too large or if my beans are too old, my brew will be quick. If my grind size is too fine and packed in there, um, my brew amount will be longer. Uh, so we'll try to always keep that weight consistent. So we'll try to do 17 grams in the handle. We'll try to get 35 out into the cup. That's consistent. That should, should, shouldn't change. Uh, and we'll be program I'll be programming the, button the double button for you so that you can get about 35 to 40 grams of coffee in the handle. Um, and then in the future you can check, does that shot take 25 seconds or does it take 15 seconds or 10 seconds? If it, anything under 20 is a bit too quick. Anything over 35 is too long. Um, so it should be in that 25 second sort of range. Uh, I'll program it for you. You don't have to program it every single time, of course. So to do that, you'll do program, then the button. Then it'll start brewing and I'll press it when I'm happy with that amount. Um, we're at 15 seconds and it's looking good. 
symmetrical for, for both, for both spouts. Um, and about one o'clock pressure. Um, that was 22 seconds, I think. And 35 grams, perfect. Uh, well, close, very, very good to perfect. Uh, perfect would be like 25 seconds, but like 22 seconds, that's pretty good. Sorry about the mess. But yeah, this is what 35 grams looks like. I calibrated this scale before, after adding the spoon and everything. Uh, 35 grams. You can eye level it, you don't have to use the scale every single time. Uh, but yeah, that's what it looks like. And I'm happy with that. And now for in the future, when you press the button, you'll be getting about 35 grams as well. If you use similar settings, uh, different beans will brew at different settings. So if you have a different brand of beans, uh, you may get slightly different uh, flow speeds or even slightly different amount in the port filter every time you grind. So the grinder is programmed to say six, seven seconds uh, grinding time. That for me gave me about eight grams. For you, it may give you more or less. So you just have to test the suit with your own beans. I am happy with that. So I'll put that on the side and I'll clean it up. Cleaning, you just have to do that a few seconds after the shot. Not straight away, just to, keep, to let it drain, uh, but certainly not in the day after. It'll um, give you more trouble the longer you wait. So it'll get stuck to the basket, it'll get stuck to the group head. Uh, it's always recommended to clean as soon as you finish the shot. Well, a, a few seconds after, at least. Uh, bit of a workout to clean. So it needs a few knocks. That's one of the disadvantages of this sort of basket, if I'm being honest. Uh, but the advantage, like I said, it's fairly easy to use and it's fairly consistent. And then after you knock that off, grab the uh, the port filter, put it under the shower screen and flush. That's going to clean your shower screen and your port filter in one step. So I highly recommend it. You can also lock it in to do a pressurized clean, which is uh, possible with this sort of basket. It'll pressurize and stop it. And it's going to use that water pressure to flush back into the tray giving you a clean valve, a clean shower screen, and a clean water filter. You can also grab a tissue and wipe it off. There's a little bit left, you don't have to, uh, but it'll be nice. And then you can put it down there for it to dry, or just lock it in if you're gonna make another coffee. Um, or I guess you can start grinding another dose if you're making another coffee. Uh, next would be steaming. I will turn it on. It will take about 15 seconds for it to start steaming. I'll go grab my mug. Because I'm doing a magic, I'm using my own small milk jug. So a magic is a small drink, I use a small cup and a small jug. Um, yeah, when, when you hear the pump pulsating, that means the pressure is about full. Uh, when you turn it off, you have about five seconds to position yourself before the machine reverts to espresso mode. So I'll turn it off, position the jug at an angle to keep the milk spinning and keep the tip close to the surface for the first 10 seconds or so. So it's at an angle, close to the edge, and for the first second, 10 seconds or so, I want to hear that hissing sound, and that sound happens when I'm close to the surface and injecting it. After the 10 second mark, I'm going to raise the jug. So now, after raising the jug, I'm just spinning the milk, no longer injecting air into the milk, no longer giving it a froth. Uh, since this is a, a latte, we don't want too much froth, um, or if it, for a cappuccino, maybe I would hold that position close to the surface for 15 seconds. That would give me a, a thicker froth of foam, I guess. Um, was it the magic? That's not the case. When it's too hot to the touch, too hot to touch, I will turn it off, slowly slide it out, 
Then give it a purge to clean the inside. And then turn it back off. In, it, knows, it knows what to do. In five seconds, it'll start cooling down the boiler for you to make another espresso. I will grab a wet towel and wipe it off. Uh, similar with co cleaning the coffee group head, cleaning the milk wand uh, as soon as you can is in your best interest. The longer you wait, the harder it is to clean. So the wand is metal, it gets really hot, about 120 degrees. Um, so the milk will basically stick on there, it'll cake on the metal if you don't um, clean it off. Uh, we got a good texture, I would say. Uh, knock it on the, grab your jug and knock it on the counter to break any big air bubbles. And swirl it up to mix. Don't let it sit for too long. Uh, so if you want, you can pour the milk and then do the cleaning or whatever other stuff you have to do in the kitchen. Um, me, I just have to put my spoon away, wipe the group, sorry, wipe the wand and. Yeah, that usually doesn't take too long. Once the surface is nice and smooth and shiny, you can pour. So I'm not a barista by any means. Every now and then I get a, an occasional heart or shape. This is a very strangely shaped heart, uh, but the latte itself looks really good. Um, <laughs> elongated heart looks funny. Uh, but yeah, you can do, I'm sure if you do some practice, you can do great latte art. A lot of people do. Uh, or if you have any barista training, you can do that for sure. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the machine. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate in contacting me. And I'll see you later today. Thanks, Jason.